Don't play the victim, Craig. It's not I'm not playing. Company. I'm just not talking to you guys. Today, Craig gets roasted over an open fire. Basketball Wives is back for season eight. This is my And Evelyn Lozada is here to break down all the trash talking and hard fouls. That's a touch. That's deep. This is your reality check. That makes me feel good. <laughs> Welcome everybody, so glad you could join us on this Thursday for Reality Check. I am Lindsay Rodriguez and we are so fortunate to have the one, the only Evelyn Lozada from VH1's Basketball Wives in the house today. Welcome, lovely. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So glad that you are here. And also on the couch, we have the senior news editor from People.com, Michelle Corriston. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. It is always wonderful to have you here. We have so much to talk about today. Of course, we're going to get into Basketball Wives, yes. the new season that premiered last night. But before we do that, we have to get into our top five. So let's do it. At number five, Love Island is debuting to the US on July 9th and the host will be comedian and actress Ariel Vanderberg. In response to yesterday's announcement, Ariel says, as a huge fan of the show, I'm here for it all. The love, the relationships, the recoupling, bring it on. I feel so honored to be at the head of the table watching it all go down. Ariel, congratulations. And will you guys be watching Love Island this summer? I'm obsessed with Love Island. I mean, I've been watching the British version on Hulu. Yes. All the seasons are available. I'm so happy America is going to get to see this beautiful disaster. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Evelyn? Well, Are you familiar you with Love Island? Well, me because I have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay. So maybe I need to definitely tune in and see what all the hype is yeah, about. Yeah, it's kind of like Survivor meets The Bachelor. Bachelor in Paradise, but yeah. better. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I'm definitely going to tune in. Okay. <laughs> well, watch the Australian version first because I okay. think we did it better. But okay. <laughs> whatever. Okay. At number four. This one is a potential reality crossover moment. Something might be brewing between Southern Charm's Shep Rose and Vanderpump Rules' Sheena Shea. Now, since both Bravo stars plan to attend Jackson Britney's wedding, which is very, very soon, Shep disclosed recently on People Now that Sheena texted him saying, save me a dance at Jax's wedding, and he said, Okay. So what do you think the chances are that these two are going to be the next couple, maybe a Vanderpump Rules crossover with Southern Charm? Shep is sort of a perennial bachelor, um, but that being said, I think that they have been on some dates before. Sheena has definitely dated around the Bravo universe before, so I'm into it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Evelyn, any thoughts? You know what? I think I'm into it, too. I think that they make a beautiful couple. I have seen her on the show, um, so... Look, if she's dated around, maybe this could be her future husband. You never know. Well, her, her next future right? husband, anyway. She's already <laughs> well, had one. Yeah. We need another Sheena wedding. I yeah, mean. We, got it. we need another crop top wedding. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what we need. That's what this crop world top. needs. At number three, Real Housewives of New York will begin airing tonight in its new time slot. So in a People exclusive clip, Ramona reveals she's throwing a party on the same night as Luann's Christmas cabaret. Coincidence? I think not. When she tells the Countess that this is why she and the other ladies will not be attending the show, she says in her Ramona way, I don't want you to be upset with me, but basically we support you, we love you, but we don't really want to sit and see you work. How is my Ramona impression? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how would you each react if your friends said that they didn't want to come to an event that you'd been working so hard to put together? Evelyn, do you want to? Uh, look, I wouldn't be angry at her. I don't want people to force to come to a party or an event. If you're going to come to my event and have negative energy, I'd rather you sit at home mm -hmm. um and especially after that comment that's probably best so you know i think she should sit it out <laughs> to be fair they've been to a lot of her other cabaret shows right. haven't oh. yeah they have they've done supportive. their time yeah, yeah. Michelle, anything extra to add to that inside scoop? I mean, I think Luann's Cabaret is supposed to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Everyone says it's such a hot ticket, yeah. so I'm sure that they'll get another one of her dates. Excellent. I think I'm going to have to go check it out. We should go. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> at number two, unfortunately, this one is a very sad story. Lisa Vanderpump's mother has passed away at the age of 84 years old, and that was only a year after her brother's death. Now, Lisa's rep says she is devastated and in shock, which is, of course, understandable. Our hearts absolutely go out to Lisa. Michelle, can you tell us the latest on this very sad story? This is really devastating. Lisa's brother, Mark, died of suicide just over a year ago, and she's been very vocal about the fact that returning to TV was very difficult because she was still grieving. She recently quit Beverly Hills because she couldn't handle all the drama, and this is just adding to just a mountain of problems that she's facing. And I was the one who confirmed this for people, and even hearing her publicist 
voice on the phone, you can tell that it hit them all really hard. This is, it really is tragic. Do you think that her friends from the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills will reach out and put all their differences aside, seeing as she is going through so much? I mean, I hope so. That seems like it would be the, the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously our hearts absolutely go out to Lisa and uh, we trust that you'll be keeping us up to date on all the latest on that. But uh, yeah, obviously in the meantime, we're thinking of you, Lisa. At number one, this breaking news today, another sad story, unfortunately, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Portia and Dennis have broken up after their eight month engagement. Yeah, the couple, they share a three month old daughter named Pala. So is this this is brand new information to you? you <laughs> yes, know Evelyn? I I am so disappointed. Yeah. I mean, she just seemed very happy. She just had her baby. Yeah. Let's hope it's just maybe a little. Yeah, I mean, listen, couples go through things, and hopefully they can fix whatever issues they have yeah. for their daughter. But um, that's shocking. I thought that they were you know going to continue. So hopefully you know that'll work. But maybe work they'll out. reconcile. Do yeah, you think you that we'll know. see the unraveling of this on the next season of Real Housewives of Atlanta? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. I think that those cameras will be rolling. Okay. I mean, yeah. yeah. It, it was kind of crazy though. That rumors started because they were unfollowing each other on social media. There had been little like murmurs of trouble, but this right. split itself is quite shocking. I'm always fascinated to know whose job is it to check who's following who on Instagram. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> is it? Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you tell me who unfollowed me in the last 24 hours? Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, why don't we talk about what we're really here to talk about, and that is season eight of Basketball Wives. That premiered last night, and it did not skimp on the drama. So in three words, Evelyn, how would you describe the new season? Oh, my gosh. Probably definitely crazy, intense, and very emotional. Yeah, based you on know, what I saw it last was, night, yeah. You know, every time I start um, filming a new season, you can kind of gauge how things are going to go, and this season... It was just so many things that happened. There were so much personal, emotional issues that people opened up about on the show, I with my cast members. So it was a lot, like every week it was something. At some point we were all like, we're tired. I, I'm still filming now. <laughs> like, Who are you? I have been filming since January. Oh so um, we're still, you know, we're at the very tail end of it, but it was, it's, it's been a long season, but I feel like this is probably one of the best seasons and the new and the newbies definitely brought something to the table because you never know how new cast members how things yeah, are going to sure. work out. It's yeah. a little intimidating coming they could throw onto up the, the show. whole dynamic, or they could make it the yeah. best ever. So, so you know, I give credit to the new you know the new girls that came on the show. They definitely brought something, and and it's definitely good. Well, I want to actually dig a little deeper into a couple of scenes from last okay. night. This is a new segment that we're premiering today. It's called Behind the Scenes. So let's roll that graphic. that is okay so first of all let's talk about the awkward situation that's surrounding byron and cc's wedding take a look at this byron wants to ask thomas to be his best man right right as he should that's his son but byron isn't feeling Kristen right now and he doesn't want her at our wedding oh that's a touch that's deep that's deep and we are not on good terms right now yeah so what were your initial thoughts about this evelyn did you find it shocking that byron didn't want uh Kristen there I did, and you know, I feel like everyone, you know, I feel like Cece's having conversations with Byron at home. I feel like Kristen's not communicating with Byron. You know, I'm always like, you guys need to get together in a room because, you know, so communication is key. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I was so devastated because I know that Kristen loves Byron. And I just feel like things are getting lost in translation because they are not communicating. Um, and I also think he's upset because of what she said on the show last season mm -hmm. about him not seeing, his you know, his granddaughter. Yeah. But you guys signed on to do a reality show, and this is, you know, you never know what's going to come out. And she was trying so hard to not really get too deep into the issues that were going on within the family. But you start filming, then this person says something, you have to respond. So, you know, it's she's in a tough position. Yeah, definitely. Michelle, what do you think? Do you think people should just put aside their differences for the sake of one day and such an important event, i.e. a wedding? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a life moment. And that's when you want everyone to come together and support you and put yeah. the petty things aside. Exactly, because those petty things won't matter in 50 years when you're yeah. looking at your wedding album being like, oh, I'm sad right. that she wasn't yeah. there. So why don't we get into the next major moment and that happened at Shawnee's party when Jennifer showed up despite all the trouble she'd caused mm -hmm. last season. Watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi. Oh, really? That's what we doing? Oh, no, she didn't. Okay. 
I'm starting to think that Jennifer likes to be the center of drama because why would you show up if you had so much negative to say? Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I don't understand. You know, we find out that she was making comments about um, Shawnee's ex-husband, you know, saying that, you know, no, it's no secret that he was running around. And I just feel like that is such a low blow. Like, we all have been ex fiancés wives. She was an ex-wife. She went through infidelity. So I feel like that's never, ever something that you should jab at somebody because yeah. you went through the same thing. Yep. So with all that said and done, it was shocking that she, you know, she was saying these things the day prior. Kristen told us at the event, and then she still walks in. So I, I we, Shawnee, I mean, as you can see, people don't really get to see Shawnee like that. Yeah. But when she's fired yeah. up, She's fired up. And, well, because I um, think that was like, saying stuff about her family and like her and Shaq are in a good place now, despite being, they've been yeah. apart for many years. But you know, she said herself, they're in such a great place where co parenting is concerned. So yes. to have this stuff brought back up is just she was like just trying stop. to antagonize everyone. Like what <sighs> was going through her head? I have no idea because you are not forced to go to a scene. Right. If you feel uncomfortable about the scene, even though you signed the contract, if you don't want to go, you don't want to go. There's right. times that I've been like, Hmm, I don't know if I'm getting set up. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not going, and I go with that. So I don't know why she thought that that was going to go well. And then her kids are there. That's another uh, thing. Yeah, it's a you celebration know? of one of her kids who's yes. been through this horrible situation so, health-wise. You know, that was definitely a hor I mean, we got up. You know, I was holding the umbrella for her. I was like, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Because I did not think she was going to come. Very, very intense. Well, we do have to take a very short break, and uh, Michelle's going to step out just for a minute. But when we come back, we will be getting uh, Evelyn to dish on her castmates with another round of Cast on Blast. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. I am thrilled to have Evelyn Lozada from VH1's Basketball Wives in the studio today to talk about last night's season premiere. And now, Evelyn, are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> you promised me this was going to get R-rated, and I hope that you are right, because it is time to play Cast on Blast. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Okay, so the way this is going to work okay. is I'm going to give you names of some of your Basketball Wives co-stars, and I want you to tell me three things about them. Something sweet, if you have something, something salty, and something secret. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Well, first up, we have Shawnee. Okay. <laughs> Shawnee, something sweet. Yeah. She's a great mom. Something salty? I don't know. I don't have. A, I don't know anything salty about her. That's wonderful. Yeah, she's a really good person. She seems. Yeah. A secret. She has an obsession with eating ice. With eating ice? Yeah. That's very good for nausea. But yeah, I'm she's not. oh, she likes to chew on ice okay. all the time. So I feel like nobody knows that about her. But she does. She yeah. has one of those little ice. Um, I guess a little ice maker. Yeah. And she likes to just chomp on ice. Why not? It's a she's healthy be like, snack. You told the world. That. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now what about Jackie? Um, Jackie, sweet, um, I say she's very funny, um, salty, I think she's very sneaky, Ooh. and a secret, she doesn't give Really? Yeah. To, but, wait. <laughs> she doesn't give to, so I have, she's been married for a hundred yeah. years, but she doesn't give And I'm Doug like, has never kind of said, How does this work? <laughs> uh, that's what I said, I'm like, is he okay with this? I mean, they've been married. They they renew their wedding every year. So I'm like, she must be doing something right. Something, so. yeah. But yeah, she doesn't give a All right, there you go. You heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> All right, and now Jennifer. <laughs> this is great that it's R-rated, Jennifer. Jennifer! Yeah. Jennifer is something sweet. Hmm. Can you think of anything at this particular moment? Oh, this, it's really, really hard. Um, you can give she's me She's smart. Okay. I would say she's very smart. Um, Salty, um, she's a liar. Yeah. Well, she lies. There's yeah. a lot of lies going on. She causes so much trouble with you yeah, guys. Yeah, so it's, you know, and the thing is, is like she'll stick to it for dear life, you know, mm. and that's, you know, I just feel like we're at a point in our lives. Like, you know, we, we make mistakes. You say things. You may have said something, whatever. But, um, you know, she just takes it far. You know, I feel yeah. like at some point you just need to say, I said this. Yeah. And then a secret, um, oh, 
Um, I don't I don't know if I could say any of her secrets. I don't want to put her business on blast. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. We also don't want her to come for you, so. Yeah, well, I'm not worried about that okay. part. <laughs> well, why don't we move on to Tammy? Because first of all, I yeah. have to ask you, did you genuinely think that she had put some voodoo something on you when you went to the shaman in the desert? Well, the thing about it is, is that, uh, first of all, everything I say on the show, I, I, I'm not making things up for yeah. reality TV. I always say I'm not an actress. And years ago, she did tell us that she, you know, messes with, you know, voodoo and those type of things. So I did feel like, because I didn't know what was going on with me physically. Yeah. You know, I'm like, well, maybe I have a hex on me, you know? Although I believe in God and, you know, I don't want to believe in those things. But then a part of me was like, hmm. You never know, you right. know, you never know about, you know, just spirits and spiritual stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it freaks me out. So yeah, it can't be too um, safe, that's so. how the shaman came about. Yeah, that was a great scene. What about two other things about Tammy? Something uh, salty and something. Is there something sweet or do you want to do salty? <laughs> um, oh, is there some she's a good mom. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give sweet. I'll give credit when credit is due. I feel like she's she's a good mom. Salty, she's vindictive, she's a liar, she's, you know, she's very strategic, she's, um, you know, all those things. All the things. And a secret, um, probably the probably the voodoo stuff. Yeah. And I think that was something that people, people think I'm making that up. I'm like, I'm not making that up. This came from her mouth to me. Wow, <laughs> interesting. All right, first, and then yourself. Evelyn, what are three things about you? Sweet, salty, and secret. Sweet, I would say... I'm very honest. Um, salty, I am, when I get mad, I get mad. That's probably the negative. You know, I will get from zero to a thousand. Um, and a secret about me. Reality check exclusive, I hope about to... What's a secret? Um, my tongue can touch my nose. Get it, show me. <laughs> <laughs> show us. The side view. Yeah! <laughs> very good, very impressive. One of many, many talents. Well, that's a talent. I yeah, have. absolutely. Maybe Jackie should try that. I don't know. I think so. I think so. I'm like, I'll give you a lesson, Jackie. We can work this out. Oh, my goodness. Well, on that note, we are going to take a break, but don't go anywhere because Evelyn and I will be right back to talk more reality TV. Welcome back to the show. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. We have a very fun surprise for our viewers. What we're going to do now is take a look at some of the best moments from reality TV this week in a brand new segment called Reality Bites. Enjoy. I feel like everybody thinks it's just Luke that makes me feel freaking psycho and irritated right now. It's all of you. Oh. It's truly all of you. Will you marry me? We're getting married. Monique gave a speech okay. and offered up the microphone to have anyone who wanted to share their miscarriage story. This is the final rose tonight. When you're ready. I immediately was like, oh, here we go. Like. It was very like, <laughs> you know, and I just. <laughs> this is so weird and I love it. Hashtag, I like weird. Like. Except this race. With my whole heart. All it takes is one person to believe. This was your moment. Thank you. Okay, I can't talk about Terry doing the golden buzz without crying, so I'm gonna say that my favorite moment was the rat lady from AGT, because that rat was really talented. That rat, I just, <laughs> I lived in New York all my life. Like, that is not something that we ever want to play with. I just watching it, I am cringing. It was very good, though, and she she is going to the next round, so. Good for her. It's like a She's talented. What was your favorite moment? Um, I would say the bachelorette, because mm. she was so irritated, like, just how she said. I don't think in the history of Bachelorette, anyone has told the entire cast that they're all annoying. Yeah, so you're all pissing me I off. Like, I like her. She's my kind of girl. And uh, what about from Basketball Wives last night? What was your favorite line from that? Um, I Probably Leo. Like, my son Leo's um, telling me that he hopes I don't die. I because know. he's so unfiltered. Yeah. And I know people don't know Carl. 
you know, that side of Carl, they know baseball Carl, right. but Carl's mouth is very, he makes me cringe. So my, my son Leo has a little bit of both. So he says the craziest thing. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> don't say that. Yeah, oh. so I, I'll take that one. Well, he's a super cute kid, Thank your you. son. Thank so you so much. We are gonna take one last break, but when we come back, we will be hitting you with another great moment in reality TV history. Stick around. Welcome back. Here is a salmonella inducing reality throwback courtesy of Flavor of Love. You're welcome. The purpose of you being here is to prepare my chicken. You only get 30 minutes. In this 2006 episode of Flavor of Love, contestants are challenged to impress Flavor Flav's mother by making her a fried chicken dinner. Can we call it, uh, like, call and have it catered or no? No. Hottie was raised vegetarian and had the least experience cooking meat, so she decides to go with what she knows and pack her bird full of vegetables and just about anything else that was in arm's reach. But the most disturbing moment comes when she makes a beeline for the microwave. I went to the microwave, put the chicken in, and there was a button that said, chicken. If nothing else, you have to applaud Hottie's confidence. I think putting a chicken in the microwave is like the most sanitary thing to do, plus it doesn't have all the extra calories from the grease. But Flav and his mom were not impressed. It ain't cooked. Hottie's microwave chicken deserves to be in the pantheon of reality's greatest moments, but please keep it off the dinner table. I just want to say whoever number eight was, that wasn't serious, was it? <laughs> that chicken had a face. It had a marshmallow face. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what? It's okay, Evelyn. Yes. That's all we have time for today, so you and I can go puke real quick. Yes. <laughs> but thank you so much <laughs> You're so welcome. for hanging out all day today. Really appreciate I it. Fun. And excited to see the rest of Basketball Wives this yes, season. It's going to be good. And also make sure you check out Evelyn's new book. It is called The Perfect Date. And those beautiful earrings that you're wearing are from your own jewelry line yes. named Evelyn. So check them out as yes. well. Beautiful pieces. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I am Liz Rodriguez, and I'll check you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.